तो ये वाला सबको मिलेगा नाउ बेसिक एडवांस एंड द थर्ड ब्रोशर बी विच इज वेरी नेसेसरी फॉर यू ऑल बींग हियर एंड यू आर कमिंग अगेन एंड अगेन कि इट इज द वर्च्यू द वर्च्यू ऑफ रेपिटेशन सतत अभ्यास वाई अ डिसाइपल मस्ट कम इन स्पाइट ऑफ लर्निंग ऑल द टेक्निक्स मस्ट कम अगेन एंड अगेन टू द सेम मास्टर द सेम प्लेस एंड प्रैक्टिस द सेम टेक्निक अनुष्ठान इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओ आई प्रैक्टिस वन लेडी केम टू मी इन अमेरिका एंड शी टोल मी ओ हलो गुरु हाउ आर यू एंड दिस इज दैट आई सेड ओ हलो वेरी फैशनेबल लेडी एंड ऑल सो शी हैड सम शी वॉज स्मोकिंग अ लॉन्ग सिगरेट with some a bottle of a uh, uh, glass of champagne and she said you know i've traveled the the world and i've been to all the gurus in the world see when you cross, when you go to the world they are good hearted people they don't mean it bad they don't expect to be like you because you know what is a uh, guru parampara what is adab what is respect because your mothers have taught you they have not been taught so it's okay if they put their leg one on top of the other and they smoke and they talk to you well hello guru how are you it's fine they feel everybody is equal you know like they think everybody is it's it's a body culture she said you know i've been to all the gurus practically in the world i've traveled the whole world and i've been to all the gurus and then i told her and you've learned nothing <laughs> because you have spent your time going to the gurus and seeing what are their dress where do they come from what do they teach you have been inquiring but you have not cared to sit down and learn what they had to teach you and this is your greatest shortcoming although you did it in innocence you have failed yourself you have failed yourself because you are not receptive here you have to be receptive even to the to the till now you had not heard you had not heard the sound of the birds and i tell you silent and listen to the sounds and suddenly you'll hear many sounds of birds the sound was there from before but our minds were not open to it they were not receptive to it in this case of course you were receptive to the guru but in her case it was not receptive to the teachings of the gurus so i said you have to open your mind we have about 300 species of different birds here in the aviary of of sita mai kadara sita mai so the important factor is why you should not go hedge hopping from guru to guru and try to see what they have to teach one day about 20 people came to me so i said yes where are you from so he said they said we are from avdut baba shiv yogi he teaches in bombay and he said if you want to go anywhere don't go anywhere if you want to go anywhere go to gurunath's ashram he holds you in very high esteem and he says there's nothing else anywhere else if at all you're going to learn go take the darshan of the mercury shivling and sit at his feet and learn don't fidget and roam here and there so he sent those people he himself had come about 10 15 years back he himself had taken darshan up there that time the shivling was not made i think or maybe it was but uh what the guru's advice and what i advise wherever you go suppose you are a jewish person then go to your synagogue and learn and meditate there this is because ek sadhe so sab sadhe sab sadhe sab jaye if you learn one then that one learning gives you the links of all the other knowledges that is very important 
because if you learn in the central channel <coughs> your central channel is the wikipedia of all other branches of knowledge and nerves the wikipedia is within you yourself you don't need to go out to other wikipedias and correct what they have to say and put all your own stuff in all is within you all the knowledge you of the world you need is within yourself all the medicine that you need is within your own medicine box of the endocrine system of glands and you have iodine and you have all these these other things and you have to awaken the healing within you so the question is what is the virtue of coming again and again to the same master to the same place and practice the same technique when you come to the same place again and again <clears throat> that that place becomes for you a mandir mandir the gate becomes for you the swarga dwar and the sthan becomes the mandir and by your regular practice you become your own ishd devta swarga dwar mandir aur tum khud hi ishd ho is mandir mein baithe hue you sitting in the temple you become the ishd ishd devta and then you feel that there is no difference between the divine and you but if you keep changing your practice and keep changing the vibrations of a, and go to different places you cannot set the first thing is that in order for the spiritual plant within you to grow the spiritual kundalini to awaken the spiritual plant to grow you must not change your masters and your sthan hmm you must not change the soil of the you must not change the soil that is the sthan right and if you go to another place the main soil the spiritual soil which is given to you in your practice is the shiva shakti anusandhan in that spiritual soil your kundalini energy takes on a certain momentum a certain pattern and a certain vibration if you practice another technique that momentum pattern and vibration changes i do you understand i'm not saying go here and don't go there go anywhere but don't change the pattern and momentum then from there if you go to another place still the pattern and momentum changes of your physical body your emotional body your mental body and your spiritual body which is the movement of kundalini up and down your spine that is the creme de la creme of practicing the same technique at the same place under the guru krupa the same master do you understand so the technique which you practice is like the motor vehicle it has the power it has the energy but it does not have the fuel of enlightenment you may have the best car rolls royce mercedes but no petrol you can't move so you may have the best techniques if you don't have guru krupa then the your car will not move towards the goal do you understand many people have khechri mudra it is said the technique is perfected right ba khechri lag lag kya lage guru ghat amrit ghat guru gangan hoye this is ba khechri lag lag kya lage amrit ghat guru gangan hoye if in the amrit ghat in the in the top in your in your in your third ventricle uh, uh, that is is the amrit ghat if there is no guru gang guru ke ganga nahi hogi behti to then you, ke, you you cannot be being enlightened by khechri mudra guru ghat amrit ghat guru ganga na hoye ba khechri lag lag kya lage amrit ghat guru ganga na hoye ba saanse khich khich kya khiche guru pran jame na samoye so it says you may do the kriya perfectly you may do the kriya perfectly but if the guru krupa is not guru pran guru krupa in the form of pran is not assisting your shwaso pran 
if Guru Chetana Pran is not assisting your Shwaso Pran, then your Kriya Yoga does not become successful. Therefore, Guru Krupa is the crux of it all. It is the creme de la creme, raison d'etre for success in Kriya Yoga. It is the Chetana of the Guru which makes your Pranapan Yadnya Shiva Shakti Anusandhan successful. Therefore, it is necessary for a place, the person <coughs> and the practice to be the same under the same Guru. The guidance of the Sadguru is always important. It is good if you practice your Kriya techniques at home, anywhere in the world. <coughs> but it is even better if you can come once in a month, once in three months or once in six months or once a year to the same master and rejuvenate, renew and rejuvenate your practice so that his Chaitanya, the spark of his livingness may enliven your sadhana and transform you, transform the matter in you to energy, to emotions, to devotion, to love, to wisdom, to divine consciousness. This is the alchemy of the total transformation which is done by the, the soul Chaitanya, the light of the soul of the Sadguru. Is that clear? So this is the virtue of coming to the same place, practicing the same technique under the guidance of the same Sadguru. Om Namah Shivaya. You also said something uh, which says that Guru Sanidhya, being in the Sanidhya of the Guru is Samadhi Saman. Guru Sanidhya Samadhi Saman is because when you come in the presence of the Master, his Shiva path, his no mind state takes over you. Yes. And once you get into that state in which he is, the decay of your body cells stop. So now in this case what happens that the Sadguru here, you have to imagine him from the grossest state. The Sadguru is like a fountain. He is, he is emitting, he is, he is fountaining, he is fountaining like a fountain, sparks of light. And these sparks of light create a whole magnetic field in within which you are drowned. You are soaked and absorbed like a Roshagulla in the rush. Right? So, you will be like a Roshagulla in the ras of the Guru, Rasanand. But this depends on your mind. If your mind is open and absorbs it, then so each to the degree of his, his attunement with the Guru, each to the degree of his, his, his uh, attunement. So the Guru is always in a state of Unmani Avastha, state of Samadhi. If you tune in with him, you will also become in a state of Unmani Avastha and Samadhi. Some people will emotionally, will absorb him at the Sadguru at the emotional level. Some people will absorb the Sadguru at the mental level. Some people will absorb the Guru, Sadguru at the intuitional or Sabikalp Samadhi level. Some will absorb the Guru at the Nirvikalp Samadhi level, which is very rare but which can happen. And that's why the Guru says, come share my Samadhi. That's why it is important to repeatedly come and again to the, and again to the same Guru. Because you can share his Samadhi and your evolution is quickened by leaps and bounds. By thousands of years your evolution is, even if you don't like it, even if you are in a bad mood. Come with all your emotional luggage, come with all your stress, come with all your tension and I will dissolve it. Even if I am not here, I am sitting here, I will always be there. This is the other important thing, this is called Shiva path. In the Shiva path it is said for you students, if any mind, mind is you, and consciousness is me, okay? Let's think that. If any mind of the disciple is attuned to an undifferentiated consciousness of the master, if any mind is attuned to an undifferentiated consciousness, then that mind, that mind shall become that consciousness to the degree of its attunement with that consciousness. Got it? So you will become me to the extent of your Atmasat with me. 
تعداد میں ہو جانا چاہیے دے اٹیونمنٹ وتھ می تمہاری سنویدن شیلتا یو سنویدن شیلتا یو ایمپتی دس ایکچولی ہیپنز اف یو ٹرائی اٹ ناؤ آلسو یو فیل دا پیس یو جسٹ ہیو ٹو ریلیکس اٹس ایزیئر ٹو ریلیکس لائک دس دین لائک دس اور لائک دس If this is a challenge, I'll see how the Guru can affect me. He's giving no transmission. Then of course, who's interested in giving you a transmission? You, you stick your left shoulder out and say, Chal aja. It's not Chal aja. Ye Prabhu de ja. <laughs> so some people do that in the West. They go and test you and they say, Chal, I'll see what I'm doing. Hey, you're a bad guy. You're doing your own loss. You're doing your own loss. It's not a challenge. This is a challenge. It's not a challenge. It is, I am a server of humanity and I have come to serve you as a servant of humanity. Accept the service and transform yourself. Now the second thing why, even after the disciple has received, received all his six Kriyas or 36 Kriyas now as the new age people say, the six Kriyas after having been received, why you must still come to the same Sthan, to the same Ashram and the same Sadguru? even after you are, have received your techniques and are practicing them, the Sadguru still, by his spiritual vibrations, by his Kundalini Shakti path, the energy transmitted from his Kundalini Shakti, he works on all your Shada Chakras, on every chakra of your being. Within the chakras are lodged your DNA. He can transform your negative DNA. He can transform your negative system. He can eliminate your emotions which are suffering. The suffering of your emotions is eliminated by him. Your stress is relieved. That is what is done by re sitting repeatedly in the presence of the Sadguru. Any questions? You can see when a person is stressed by their behavior. You see, when a person has more responsibilities, usually he is stressed. Because his mind has been tuned and geared. You know, his, uh, what has happened? If a fellow suddenly comes from fighting in the... Like Maharana Uday Singh, if he is suddenly fighting in this, he also meditates. He suddenly comes after a battle and he sits here. You will always see he will be doing like this. Not that he's a bad meditator, he's good. But his parasympathetic nervous system, his alert systems have been geared so much. The adrenaline, fight-flight mechanism is he's so charged that it will take him two or three days to calm down. And on the third day, he'll be sitting like this. Ki aakhir, karne karane wala to wo hi hai. Mujhe lag raha tha, do, teen din ki mein hi kar raha tha. Phir Prabhu ne bataya, vahaan Shibling ke paas, ki bhaiya, beta, mein kar raha hoon. Tu ek nimitya hai. تو یہ جب بتایا تب میں شانت ہوا تو سے کریتا آنی کرویتا شرن تلا بھگونتا کتنا اچھا یہ ہے گانا کہ کرتا کرویتا تو تو ہے پربو ultimately when I surrender not when I do it from ego when I surrender you are the کرتا کرویتا so ultimately the good job which is done the ego sometimes has a satya ahamkar and it feels it is doing it. But it is the good Lord doing it. So when your body language is a little tense and you are fidgety, that means you have a lot of responsibility on you. Something else is weighing on your mind. You know, the mind is so tricky. Something else is weighing. So many times it so happens, I will tell you with me what happens. I go into my states of samadhi. Regularly I am dissolving in my highest samadhi. But sometimes, when I am in a mood, then I have not seen my grandchildren. So then suddenly, before I go into that, I am doing my Kriya. And after Kriya, when before going to Paravas, I say, no, I get up. I go to the pastry store. Then I buy all the cakes for my grandchildren. I must finish that. That's at the back of my head. Let me get it done with. And then you get the cakes or the pizzas, the cheese burst pizzas. You know, there's a new pizza which is cheese burst. I am very in high tech with this because I have grandchildren and they get all, all these things. 
and some Italian people who get it ordered, like Alexandro orders it, burst, and we are bursting with cheese. So then we have this, and we have the cakes and all. Then we are shanti, shanti. Then in the then in the evening I can go and meditate and do. So when it happens with me, I am a grihasthi sadguru. In a grihast, I have my responsibilities. My all my sons and my grandsons know that as far as family life is concerned, vyavhar is concerned, I know nothing. I am a zero. They know it, but because of respect, they don't say it. <laughs> so respect. They, old man has mucked it up. He has messed it up there. He has gone to this house. He was supposed to come here. So many times misunderstanding with the grandchildren and this. And there's a huge. And the grandchildren are not bothered, and I'm not bothered. The parents are bothered. <laughs> Some protocol mess up or something. So I said, "Jado, hey, Bhagwan, Prabhu, kitni galtiya karayega." <laughs> You see, ultimately, two days ki zindagi hai. We have to go in two days. Not you, huh? You are doing kriya yoga. You cannot go so easily unless you get darshan. Because now you have hooked God with the practice of your kriya yoga. You have hooked the sadguru. You are coming again and again. You are deserving something much more in the fundamental truth of life, which has nothing to do with the relative truth. No man is perfect enough. In relativity, to judge another man through his zigzag vision, relativity's vision is all zigzag, and unless you are perfect, you cannot you you cannot be a judge over another person. Do you understand? The zigzag vision of relativity does not allow you to be a judge over another person. No man, until he is perfect, can judge another man. God is the only judge. His dispensation. Comes through the law of karma. Finished. He is the perfect judge. What he has dispensed through the law of retribution, the karmic law. अरे पेड़ बोए बबूल के तो आम कहाँ से आए? वो वो देख लेंगे. बबूल के पेड़ बो के भी आम आ सकते हैं. यदि आप क्रिया योग करें तो ये कैसे हो सकता है? गुरुनाथ ये क्या कह रहे हैं आप? You are going against the fundamental philosophy, the great sages and the masters, the great philosophy of Sankhya Yoga, who says only something can come out of something, nothing cannot come out of uh, something cannot come out of nothing. But God is God; He can make something come out of nothing. That's why God is God. That's why He can do the impossible. That He doesn't do it to keep His own law and order is a different question. But don't limit His impossibility. Don't limit the uniqueness of the Lord God. Have full faith; nothing is impossible for Him. And we, who are attached to Him by a single thread of breath, Shiva, we will also be saved in His love and His compassion. But for that, you must have only one string. Don't start pulling many strings; all of them will break. Make it stronger and stronger and stronger, and then climb up as the string. As the spider's web becomes into a thicker rope, you can climb your way right to the top and meet your divine Lord. I. I. So that is the virtue of repetition, the virtue of repeated coming to the same Sadguru, the same Sadhana, and the same Sthan. Sadguru, Sadhana, or Sthan, ye ek hona chahiye. सदगुरु साधना जो उसने दी है और स्थान जो उसका है वो एक ही होने पे आपका मोक्ष निश्चित है ओम नमः शिवाय यस